just finished coaching this group of knuckleheads. Gonna get them mobilized and then we're gonna bench. Well, okay, just me. So I just got back from coaching and training. Uh, now I gotta eat, drink water, you know, all those sort of basic things you have to do. It's, uh, it's really hard to focus on training right now. I found out the day before yesterday that my, my aunt, my mom's sister, my mom's youngest sister, uh, passed away. She had a form of frontal lobe dementia. It was degenerative and it eventually, you know, she succumbed to it. Um, you know, she lived for, I guess, about a decade with it. So that's one of those, I guess, you know, you know is coming, but that doesn't really help, you know, shield you from the grief. And it's not like, you know, we had a day-to-day -day relationship as adults and everything like that. We were in touch here and there, but, uh, you know, as a child, I have a lot of really, really good memories of her. Um, and we spent a lot of time with her. And, uh, you know, our families were close, and I was close with uh, her daughter. Um, and then she had a younger daughter from a second marriage who's in her 20s now. So, you know, I got to see, that's one of the first people I ever saw 
as a baby become an adult. Like I saw that, I saw her as an infant when I was like 15 or 16 years old and then saw her become an adult. And that's, I mean, that's trippy in and of itself, but yeah, I mean, it, it makes things harder to focus on when you're thinking about that sort of stuff. I mean, you still have a job to do, you still have kids to raise, you still have responsibilities and you don't just shut down. But I think what really got to me like late at night after I thought about it was I looked at the trend in my family and I looked at, you know, the whenever somebody passes away, somebody close to you or a family member passes, you, you're going to contemplate your own mortality. It's just the way it is. It's the way the human beings work. It's a nice reminder that you're only here temporarily, that you get one ride on this piece of rock floating through space. So it's, it's, it can be positive, but it certainly, in the moment, it doesn't feel like it. And what I, where it led me was I started looking at the trend in my family. I looked at health. I looked at life expectancy in my family. And, you know, my mom died when I was 25 years old, just over 10 years ago. Um, she died of complications due to heart disease. Um, she was also a type 1 diabetic. My dad um, has cancer, has heart disease. He's still kicking. He's made it quite a while. He's in his 70s. Um, all of his brothers are dead. Various levels of alcoholism, heart disease, who knows what else. Uh, my mom's oldest sister died heart disease. My grandmother on my mom's side died heart disease. My grandfather on my dad's side, who I never knew, he died young. I'm not sure the exact reasons. It was natural causes when he was young, but he died when my dad was eight years old. My, uh, my maternal grandfather, he died of complications, cardiovascular disease. He died from a, well, it was a stroke. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it don't look good when you look at it in terms of the genetic blueprint, the genetic stuff that makes me up. You know, the risk factors are there. It's a big, heavy block right in the middle right there. And I can do a lot of things to mitigate risk factors, but it's really hard to escape from your genetics. And that leads me to not the best place. And, it, you know, I was certainly there two nights ago and a little bit yesterday that, you know, what if, what if I can't escape it? You know, what if I can't? And, you know, what if I'm all of a sudden gone? What if I go just like they did, just like my family did? You know, what if it's a stroke, heart attack? What if it's one of those things? And all of a sudden I'm not here as long as I expected to be. And, you know, my kids don't have me anymore. My wife doesn't have me anymore. And that's, I mean, look, that's heavy. So yeah, it's hard to focus on training right now. It's hard to focus on taking care of my body and being better and improving and getting, making those little steps every day. But what I finally came to was this. What better thing is there for me to focus on than that right now? What better use of my time is there? Because if I have this giant block of risk factor that's weighing me down, that's around my neck and pulling me down, I can't do anything about that. That's the hand I was dealt. That's the percentage. It is what it is. Whatever, however, you know, Mother Nature calculates that out, I got no control over it. So I'm going to control the things I can control. I'm going to get better every day. I'm going to lift. I'm going to move. I'm going to maintain my fundamental human movements. I'm going to eat well. I'm going to be a good friend. I'm going to be a good father. I'm going to be a good husband. I'm going to try to inspire someone. I'm going to try to pass something on. That's the stuff I can control. How long I'm here, a great deal of that is not in my hands, but the part that is in my hands, I am going to take control of. So what better for me to focus on than training and improving my body right now, improving my entire life. Improving my body, improving my fitness is that cornerstone. That's the foundation of a wall that I can build against just an oncoming tide of risk factors and disease. So, might as well get to work.